Hello, I'm Bobby Butters and this is an insight into my deadlift accessories. Today we will look at some programming tips, um, why I do the exercises and how to perform them. Um, so today we've got a block pull that for me is just below my knee. So different phases of training, I might use this more in off-season training as I get closer to competition. It's probably going to be end up where it's literally just above where I'd break off the floor. So that's kind of what, what we're focusing on here. Um, but for today, um, we're going to go for the more the, the higher block pull. Um, the way that I would kind of program this particular type of um, deadlift accessory is I'd want kind of maybe lower repetition so that I can load up um, the bar a little bit more so I'm really having to kind of fight my form um, if you will so I'm trying to make sure that I'm not leaning forward um, too much I am maintaining a good position a good torso angle all the way through the lift um, and typically I would program uh, an athlete this exercise um, for similar kind of reasons so if they are kind of um, losing the bar um, at that start position phase. So say for example, if as soon as they start lifting, their shoulders kind of come forward a little bit, um, I would then program this to try and get them to, to teach them to maintain that position through the most difficult part of the lift. So a key part of this is ensuring that the setup um, is correct. So we're trying to replicate the phase of your overall deadlift with the block pull. So typically speaking, when I set up to a bar, say it's on the floor, my straps are in line with, uh, with the barbell. However, I'm quite far away from it. So what I'm gonna need to do, because it's higher up my shin, it means I'm further along in the lift. So therefore, I'm gonna shuffle my feet ever so slightly forward so that my shins are a little bit closer to the bar so then when I come down my torso angle and my knee position is in a similar position to what it would be if I was going to do a full deadlift setup so then therefore um, I'm replicating my toughest part of the lift, which is typically around about this angle or a little bit below. Okay, so one other thing that I also do with this is I do something called Cohen style bracing. So all that means is I will re-brace, so I'll reset my air at the top of the lift as opposed to doing it here and resetting my hips. The reason why I do that is because I've got there more time under tension in, um, in my upper back and throughout my spine because I'm trying to build strength in, in this position. Um, and you've also got an eccentric component and that eccentric component where you're lowering the weight under control can be um, very helpful for transference of hypertrophy of strength, etc. So it's just another way to promote that and also again, familiarizing myself with that positioning. <laughs> deadlift accessory. Now I did this predominantly in my off-season training um, earlier this year and I did a huge block of it where I just focused on building the strength of this. The reason for that is when I look at um, deadlifts that are either really hard or deadlifts that um, I, I basically fail, I tend to fail closer to, closer to the floor. And what then happens is my shoulders come forward and my knees go back, um, which then puts me in a more disadvantageous position to, um, to continue pulling. And typically speaking, when the bar is just left the floor, your hips are the furthest away from the bar. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm keeping that distance um, at, the same all the way through um, that first phase. So with this, it allows me um, to pause in that position so that I'm constantly ingraining that positioning so that when it gets harder, I've trained to be able to maintain a good position here to then be able to bring my hips through. So I'll just sort of talk through it um, and hopefully it makes some sense for you. So. I would set up as a normal deadlift here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pause right as we break off the floor. 
because that tends to be, as you break off the floor, tends to be where if there's, if for myself, if there is any issues um, where I'm losing form, etc., then that tends to be where it is. Okay, so a key accessory that I have utilized over recent years now that I have access to one is uh, the GHD, also known as the glute ham raise developer. So main reasons really being for this exercise is to develop my glutes and my hamstrings, get some hypertrophy, gain some strength. Um, and what's really good about this is you've got that eccentric control and it's, and it's shown in research that that eccentric control really has good transference to being able to develop hypertrophy. So you've got that time under tension um, and, and also um, the strength uh, aspect of things too. So, in order to set this up for yourself, um, will depend basically on your ability level. Um, so I've got this set up for, for me. Um, I'm not the best at these, hence why I'm doing them, hence why they're in my program to develop strength in my hamstrings. Um, so if you are someone who's quite new to this, I'd recommend to start this um, a little bit maybe closer and also a little bit lower um, so that you've got more weight on kind of the rounded part. And then as you gain experience, gain strength, gain control of this exercise, you can then push it further back um, and then maybe adjust the height to just make it a little bit harder for yourself. Make sure that your feet are the same width apart as much as possible. You don't kind of want one over there and one further, further in. You want to make sure that they are equal. Then from here, I've set myself up so my legs are in the same position. And what I'm going to be focusing on is keeping my rib cage down, pushing my hips forward, because I don't really want my, the movement to be coming from my back. So this needs to stay nicely locked in so that I'm pulling from the hamstrings. And then going to lower slowly and under control. I don't want to flop down. And then as soon as I get to peak contraction, I'm then going to explode up, keeping my hips nice and forward. exercise now is the pull-up. So the pull-ups is an accessory that I use all the way through my training. Um, you can load it with, with a weight belt or with a dumbbell strapped between your legs, etc. Um, or you can just do body weight um, pull-ups. So main reason being is to develop strength in the back. So predominantly the prime mover is the latissimus dorsi. And the role that that muscle plays in the deadlift is essentially keeping the bar close to you. So when you're setting up in the deadlift and you're kind of pulling on the bar, pulling the slack out the bar, it's kind of your lats that are locking in. So you could argue that it's used as a fixator, so it fixes everything into position. So therefore making sure that they are strong um, is, is really important. And that's why I have them in my training and um, why I suggest quite a lot of my athletes also do them. So some general setup tips that I'd recommend is you can play around with different uh, grip widths. So the wider your hands are, the harder it is. And then the closer your hands are, typically then the easier it is. Um, I go for kind of a um, just outside shoulder width apart so that my lats are, are the things that are being predominantly engaged. One thing that people struggle with is kind of the swaying. Um, a way to avoid that can be to use a box so that you're in position first. Um, and you can also kind of your legs together so I typically cross my legs um, and that can help to stop the swaying just so that you're not kind of like launching yourself up with some body English and you are actually using using your lats to get up. <laughs> exercise is the um, hip thrust. So I have started to embed this into my training over the last sort of 12 months as a way to um, essentially develop my lockout in the deadlift. Um, so my lockout is actually the strongest part of my lift. Um, however, 
um, developing your strength is just as important as developing the areas to, um, to improve. So I'm using this as a way to overload that kind of explosive lockout, getting my glutes firing, um, making sure that my hips are in a good position. And essentially, again, you can use it as a a way to build up um, the glutes and the hamstrings as well. So I typically use this with a larger range of motion. So when I set it up, I'll have my feet relatively close to, um, to, my, to my bum. Um, and then therefore I can go for a larger range of motion um, through my glutes. If I want to focus a little bit more on my hamstrings um, and involve more of my posterior chain, I'm gonna have my feet further away from me. So the way that I set myself up for this is I'm gonna start on the floor and essentially roll the bar so that it's sat on my hips. In short, I'd highly recommend using a barbell pad for this, um, just because you really don't want the bar to be sinking into, into your hip bones. It's not, it's definitely not worth it. So um, when you set it up, make sure you've got something nice and soft to cushion um, onto your hips. Okay, so once you are once you are happy with where the bar is placed, I then set up my, my hips and you're gonna use a bench to kind of dig yourself into, into the bench so you're not gonna move. Okay, then from there, when you lift your hips up, you essentially want the bench to be around about where your like kind of rear delts are. And I'm gonna make sure that you're gonna keep your chin tucked. If you have your head like this, you'll t you'll naturally want to arch your back a little bit more. So by keeping your chin tucked, you're making sure that it's the glutes that's doing the work. there's some tips that you can take away um, for your own deadlift um, if you've got any questions please comment below